Greetings. Greetings. I am Camaro. Camaro. Hello, I'm Max. I am an ambassador to the moon and the earth. Excellent. Nice to meet you. It is my pleasure. What question uh, do you have for us today? Um, can you introduce uh, the ambassador? What entity are you, and um, uh, what's the function of the of the entity of the consul? I am Yu Yil, mm -hmm. and because I am similar in looks to the you, the people of your planet, it helps me to be more accepted in your, as an ambassador to them. Also, I can speak your language very well. We have very similar vocal cords, and I can speak all words from your planet uh, without problems. This helps with communication. Also, I have studied your language for many years, and I know it in 17 languages, and if those languages do not work, I, they can be translated into others. So what is Galactic Council? This is a galactic government. Uh, we are to give and receive suggestions and political outlooks and rules for the solar systems and the galaxies. galaxies. Mm -hmm. See, now you see this galaxy is ruled by this council. Each galaxy, which is enlightened enough to do so, has their own galactic government, which helps in keeping things peaceful and in well order. So um, are there other galactic consuls in our galaxy or is it the main one? This is a, only one galactic council, if you want to speak of it that way. We have one galactic government and the rules thereof are maintained by all the solar systems and planets. Um, is it elected? No. Mm -hmm. Well, not, not by us. Each different species who is a part of the galactic government selects their own representative or more than one re representative in some cases to come here and uh, speak for their planet or their species or whatever you want to call it. Um, does it have regular meetings or is it ongoing all the time? It has regular meetings three times in what you would call a year, uh -huh. but it also has uh, all, all kinds of activities going forth consistently, like governments other in other places. There are things introduced into the, into the uh, Galactic Council that they vote on to become rules or vote on to become laws or vote on to become um, extinct. Uh -huh. Meaning that they, it does not pass. Uh, so what is the size in terms of uh, number of people in the council? Uh, what are the structures there? There are 680,000 members. Uh -huh. That is in the actual council. There are about 89 species that are part of the galactic government. Uh -huh. So what happened? Each different species has their own idea and own ways to run their government. However, we try to blend as many ideas together and make it as fair as possible. But most realize that right and wrong are, are sort of obvious. So they, we have come to great agreements very quickly for the most part. There has been several recently that have gone into debate for long periods of time 
because of the importance and the weight of them. Most of them are about your planet because there are many that are rushing to see your planet as it changes. Not only are you going, your planet going through physiological changes, but they're going through spiritual and mental changes as well. So this is a very interesting time for those that are scientists to observe your world. Not only this, but you are going through an uh, evolution, as it is called, and, and uh, we call it rising, the rising, uh -huh. the ascension, uh -huh. you call it. Uh -huh. So therefore, these are two different things, but many people do not understand uh, the outcome of either one. But that mm -hmm. is all right. We are just seeing that there are some that are awakening now that we're asleep before and that are either turning for or against uh, your ascension. But the evolution is um, not able to be stopped. Okay, what are the functions of the galactic government? We are to keep peace uh, with all solar systems and planets and species. That is the main function. But we are also here to uh, guide and direct where there is problems in areas. They may suggest that we come and speak to them and give guidance or some uh, perhaps even restrictions or freedoms to some different species, as it were. There are times when there are species coming up that are evolving into space-worthy uh, populations or species, and we also are in charge of gently introducing them to galactic councils and alien existence. That is what you would call on your planet, uh, I forget the word, but it is to show everyone that they are, there is aliens outside of their world and that we are willing to help after you have recognized us in your first contact way. It's called disclosure. Yes. It just had escaped my mind for a moment. I haven't been speaking about disclosure with your governments much because they have already accepted it to some point. There has been much debate on your planet about what disclosure would mean but they are doing it nevertheless. Do you understand? Yes. It seems like you are frozen. Just a second. I should be back in a second. Very yes, I'm well. Good. Uh, so what Did you is, hear uh, all that I had to say? It is on record. I will listen to the missed part less, uh, later. Very well. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, what, is, what are the rules for the Prime Directive? Your world is in charge of your own well-being in many cases. We are not to interact politically or personally with your peoples. This would be uh, breaking the law of that Prime Directive. However, we do have those that have permission to have work with your weather, with your volcanic and seismic, and things that are not directly concerned, uh, directly speak to the people's minds. Do you understand that? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we also have people helping in other small ways, but it is not interacting with the cultures or with the governments. There are small groups of aliens that do work with people on your planet, 
that are, will not be universally known to have been helped at all and will not have changed the future in any way. So they are permitted as long as the timekeepers have given their okay on that, that particular uh, group. Who are the timekeepers? The, those that are in charge of time travel. I see. Uh, so the disclosure might happen at once, but it might happen gradually. If it does happen gradually, how do you judge that we are ready for, for the open contact? It is happening gradually. It yes. is not going to happen all at once. Mm -hmm. Gradual is the only way your people will accept it. Mm -hmm. um, repetition is the mother of learning. And so therefore, many times must they hear about flying saucers, UFOs, alien beings, and other things before they can even learn to accept or understand what they are. They must have some kind of personal um, curiosity about us in order to know or even think that we exist or have any interest in getting to know us. Right. So how, how, how do you judge uh, uh, what, what state should we reach to be able to actually uh, have you visited? More than 50% of your population must be in favor of accepting us as friends, not just aliens, but accept us with open arms and know that we exist in a friendly manner. If less than 50% of the population is uh, not believing that we are friendly, we cannot come. I understand. Um, so once we uh, break through the, uh, the disclosure and we start communicating with the aliens, uh, what is the procedure or the process for incorporating the planet into the galactic society? Well, first of all, we will have to meet with the governments probably several times to make rules and regulations on how we are to interact one with another without any problems. That would be the first step. We would have to agree on how to uh, bring people back and forth. We would have to agree on how to communicate with your planet so that we are not inter invading, uh, seeming like invading it or taking it over. We have no wants or desires for that. But rules and regulations must be set into play so that we have a mutual understanding of who each other is and what responsibilities we have for one another. Does that make sense? Yes. After about a year, we imagine it will take a year to two years to bring this into full effect. Then after that, we shall start exchanging peoples those that want to come and visit other places in the galaxy may do so, including uh, an especially politicians. And then we will, uh, we will have, by that time, ambassadors from each of the different planets come to you and you will have uh, selected some ambassadors or actually the spe some of the species will select their own ambassadors from your world to come to them and be part of communication between the worlds in a political manner so that they can be friendly and understand the rituals, relationships, customs, and ways and desires of each of these different species that wish to be a part of your communicating family. Uh what is their, uh, once the Earth fully incorporates into the galactic society, what would, would change? What uh, major things would change for the Earth? I believe that you would start to take on some of the ideal theologies of other species that you find 
that are acceptable and agreeable with your societies. There are other species that can live and function in a greater and more desirable way than humanity itself. And so they might be watching each society to see which ones they want to pick up some thought processes from. Also, there will be interactions with um, the hybrid colonies, with their uh, hybrid parents, and visitations of this manner will take place, and even humans will come and visit their hybrid families or star sea families. This will be a great uh, unity between uh, the constellations and humanity. Also, remember that out here, things are not done the same way as on your planet, and you will have to learn the protocols to each different society and species, and that may take some time to learn as well. Perhaps the government leaders will learn that first, and they will be able to introduce themselves properly to other species without insulting them or making them uncomfortable. Uh-huh. Nice. Can you give examples how humans would feel others uncomfortable? I believe that, that on your planet, you do shaking of hands in some places, some kiss each other on the cheek in other places. Others will put their hands on their shoulders. Each one will put a hand on each shoulder. There are different kinds of protocols for different species and kinds. This uh -huh. is what I'm speaking of. And so you will learn how to introduce yourself without embarrassing yourself. There are certain species that may have very unusual greetings for one another. Most are telepathic, but not all. If there is someone that does not know telepathic uh, ways, they will greet them with the galactic language, which is a hand gesture and signal, and they will greet each other properly with hand gestures. Can you show that? Can you repeat it, please? Well, I didn't repeat it exactly, but... That's it okay. Was I, huh? That's okay. I just wanted to see it once more. Yes, it's about the same. I said it's about the same. But okay. it is that they would speak to each other in the galactic hand language. Okay. Um, so what is the dimensionality of the galactic council? In which dimensions are you located? We are in third, fourth, and fifth. Six-dimensional beings do not, or are higher, do not belong to galactic council. They have their own realm and own councils. Uh, where, where, the, where is the council located? It has several different meeting places, <laughs> but the centralized location is near the center of the Milky Way. Uh-huh, I see. How much of the uh, representation is done um, physically in person and how much of that is done uh, remotely, percent-wise? 60% is remote. Uh-huh. Uh, so, except the species which are of familiar shapes, do you, are there like species which are very exceptionally different, like, do you have planets participate or stars participating in the council? These, the actual stars do not participate, or, or even though we know that there are beings in stars, they cannot, they're in a realm that we are, cannot communicate with properly. So they are not part of our council. How about, um, like, uh, Mushroom societies and forest societies? Yes, some tree societies, some plant societies. You said mushroom. There is, yeah. It's not a mushroom, but it is a fungus society. Uh -huh. 
And uh, there are those that you would consider as plant life uh -huh. or even uh, sea life, dolphins, whales, uh, the giant plankton people. The, there are many different societies, yes. Uh, what percent of those would be, what percent of the total representation would be like um, uh, plant-like um, species? Only about 8% is plant or uh, plant life. Uh -huh, or I see. Plants or trees. Okay. Uh-huh, I see. Okay. Uh, do you have uh, the, uh, an army? The galactic government does not have an army per se, but it has the most advanced defense systems in the galaxy because we've taken all the defense systems from all the species in the galaxy and so none of them can penetrate our uh, force field or our protection field. Uh, what about uh, the uh, wars? If there is a war, what do you do with it? There is a war going on at this time at the other side of the Milky Way just exactly, almost exactly opposite to where you are. It is a little to the right, exactly opposite, a little to the right, where three species are, are warring at this time. Many ambassadors have been sent to talk to them, but they cannot agree because it is unsure who started it, for one thing, because it was a fight over um, a group of planets that two different species claimed at the same time almost. Okay. But one claims it, one has to have claimed it earlier than the other, but the evidences are still rather shaky because some evidence was shown that was actually created and not original. Uh, but what what uh, what are the means? How do you interfere with the wars? If you don't have an army, what do you do? We actually just speak to them and give them counsel. This is the only thing that we are not going to fight their wars for them. Just as we will not fight the wars for your planet or intervene if you are destroying yourself, we can mentally come and send messages to your people, uh, just mentally but they do not have to accept that. And same with these people. We see that they are warring, but we are not getting involved in their war. That is not our place. We are to prevent wars, uh, and we are to help them find peace treaties for their wars, but we do not fight them for them. Um, so was there any time when the Galactic Council was involved in the war? Not at this point, no. Uh, how much? One of the things that we, they were very clear about from the very beginning, that they are neutral when it comes to interacting with each different species, societies. How much is uh, Galactic Council uh, is limited by uh, other galactics, other galaxies? Uh, are you... Uh, do you have like common rules and you have to uh, obey the intergalactic rules? There are intergalactic rules, but usually what happens is when you enter our galaxy, you follow our rules. When you enter the other galaxies, you follow their rules. Now there is a certain galaxy that does not want any other uh, species to enter other than its own. And uh, that is an unusual situation. However, they are starting to break down and uh, communicate more with us so that we can be more neighborly as galaxies. Um, is there um, uh, a council of galaxies which supersedes you, which is above you? There is a universal council, but it only meets once <laughs> every what you would call 30 years mm -hmm. on your planet. But that is actually a very short period in the universe. Right. So that is once every 30 of your years, or it's actually 36. Once uh -huh. every 36 of your 
earth years, they do meet as a universal council. And not every galaxy in the universe is involved with that because there are some that cannot reach the center of the universe. But so how, they can how, send, they are invited in some way, an invitation is sent throughout the universe to a particular person on the planet that has some understanding of what the universal and galactic councils are, and they will respond, um, they are given a way to respond to that invitation. Excellent. I have many more questions, but uh, I wanted just to meet another representative. So uh, I would like to invite uh, the next representative of the Council of Nine, if they're available. And I would like to speak to you some other time to continue the conversation. It was very helpful. I am glad to be of help. Have a good day. Good day.